up being God on my behalf. Your behalf. Lord have mercy. And that's why you have to have the mind of Christ to really allow the love of God to emanate out, out of your mortal and mortal bodies. Lord have mercy. Because without the love of God, we will not feed the hungry. No. I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing myself. I'm not doing too good myself, man. I tell you. I, I, it's hard, man. It's real hard right now. Times are tough. And I barely got enough to get by. I ain't got enough to share. If I had it, I'd give it to you. Yeah, right. Where's the sacrifice? What do you mean sacrifice? Well, God did it for us. Jesus Christ sacrificed himself for us. Jesus Christ lives within us. We are to be examples of Jesus Christ. We are ambassadors of Christ. Representatives of Christ. We're supposed to walk like he walks. Talk like he talked. Minister Weatherby, come on, we can't do that. That Jesus Christ was God. We got God living within us. Without God's love, we can't do it. But with God's love, I can do all things. Why? Because Christ is strengthening me. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm moving on. And he is incapable of knowing a record, progressively recognized, understanding, becoming better acquainted with them because they are spiritually discerned and estimated and appreciated. I think we've dealt with that pretty good. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 13 chapter. And I'm almost done. Lord have mercy. Without God's love. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and oh, let's go on further in that fifth verse. And I'm going to go on down here real quick. Love, love, God's loving us does not insist on his own rights or his own way. That's why I went to Philippians, the second chapter, the sixth through the eighth verse. Because God did not think it would be. He did not even try to hold on to his rightful his right, his his privileges and rightful dignity. He did not think think it robbery to be equal with God. He gave all that up for us. He did that before he even came down from heaven, y'all. Read the read the read the verses first. Read Philippians the second chapter, the fifth through the eighth verse. He did all of that before he came down to heaven. Then he took it a step further when he came down here and was obedient even to the death of the cross. Lord have mercy. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered, suffered wrong. Now, 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 understand this. Jesus Christ was the epitome of that. Why? Because when he came down into this world, the Bible says that he came unto his own and they received him not. Now, I was apt to say this all early in the year because that's, how, that's when I was up to that point. That's the way I looked at it. Early in the year, I saw that he came unto his own as coming unto the Hebrew people, the chosen people. Uh huh. But that's not what that's not what the, the Holy Ghost illuminated to me in accordance to God's word, because I was in His word uh, and I was reading His word, studying His word. When the Bible says in in uh, 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 John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. The Holy Ghost illuminate, illuminated to me right there says that was His own. Oh yeah. The earth is the Lord, the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, it all belongs to him. Sounds like that's ownership to me, y'all. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, that's everything on this earth, on it, in it, above it, below it, it all belongs to him. We, sinner. Saint, unbeliever, we belong to God. Your life, my life, is not my own. Apostle Paul recognized that. It's in him that I live, move, and have my very being. I have no life outside of Christ. Without God's love, we don't even exist. Oh, my God. And he was wrong. Even at the cross, y'all. They riled him. There was two people hanging on the side of Jesus. One on the left, one on the right. Ain't that interesting? Oh my God, ain't that interesting? Two people hanging alongside Jesus Christ. One on the right and one on the left. 
Oh my God. Now, if I went there and looked at the scripture, I don't know if the scripture actually defines this or not. But if I looked at the scripture, I would want to see which one of these was on the right and which was on the left. There were two thieves. Amen. And one was steadily going on around and Jesus, one finally came to his senses and realized and says, he says, Lord, when you enter into your kingdom, remember me. Jesus Christ told him, this day will you be with me in paradise. Now, in according to what the word of God has said, and I've already read that into your hearing from uh, 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 Matthew 25 and starting at that 35th verse, and I think around verse, yeah, starting at that 35th verse, amen, uh, 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 well, 31st verse through the 40, 44th or 45th verses, amen, the Bible lets us know that the, the, son, of, the son of Man is coming back and he's going to separate the, the nations. Uh, there's going to be some on the right hand and some on the left. Those on the right hand, they go, they go to, into, the, into the eternal kingdom prepared for them. Those on the left, eternal damnation along with Satan and, the, and his angels. I venture to say that that thief that acknowledged Jesus Christ as Lord and asked to enter into his kingdom was found on the right hand. Lord have mercy. Without God's love, Lord have mercy. Help us, Holy Ghost. Oh, he's speaking, y'all. He's speaking. I pray that those that have an ear hear what the Spirit is saying. Mm -mm -mm. And he was suffered. He was suffered wrong. And what did he say? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Lord have mercy. Without God's love, we wouldn't be able to say anything like that. Amen. Without God's love, oh no, you wrong me, I'm wronging you. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Lord help us. Verse 6, it does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Yeah, now some people get, <laughs> it does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness. Lord have mercy. But rejoices when right and truth prevail. Many people have, have, have done this. They have absolutely rejoiced at injustice and unrighteousness. How did I know, I know that to be so? In these United States of America, injustice and unrighteousness was, 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 was perpetrated on African Americans for a good num number of years. Amen. Called slavery. Many folks rejoiced in that. Matter of fact, they even try to put word on it. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. But rejoices when right and truth prevail. Help us, Holy Ghost. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. That's right. There is nothing that's stronger than the power of love. That's why without God's love, I can't do anything. I need to have the power of God. I need to have God's love within me. Why? Because he's strengthening me. And because he's strengthening me, I can do all things. I can't do nothing without him. But with him, I can do all things. Oh my God. Yes, I can. Is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Now, now I, I used to tell people about this. I, I, I really did. Because I really believed this. And this was before I got saved. The Amen. I didn't want to hear about the worst that, that happened with folk. Because that, that gives you a preconceived idea about that person without you having any knowledge about them whatsoever. And when I was when I used to work for the Social Security Administration, when I moved into management, I used to tell the places that I went to because I always when I got promoted, I moved from uh, state to state. It wasn't just from office to office, from state to state. I really did not want to get a dossier of of, of, of my employees that uh, the, uh, that were going to come underneath me. And reason being is, I said that uh, this afforded them an opportunity to have a clean slate. And what am I saying? Because I know that uh, many things that you can hear, reports about people, it's not always factual. No, it's not. And there's all there, there can be some mitigating circumstances why certain people act the way they act. Now, now make now, now make make this. I want to make this very clear. I'm not excusing people for doing wrong. I'm absolutely not doing that. And I'm not trying to give them an, a way of escape by saying the reason why they've done wrong is because somebody made me do it. The devil made me do it. The devil is a liar. No, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that everything that you hear is not always the truth. Amen. And that's a message right here on 
Facebook go live video and even on uh, uh, Spreaker.com on this live podcast. Many people uh, 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 subscribe to these here mediums and, and, and they take what is what is put out there as the gospel. When, when a lot of times people are putting false falsities out there just so they can get people running with things uh, 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 and, and, and running and purporting things and, they, and it becomes like a virus. Amen. Uh, uh, there was a while ago when people were running around here talking about uh, Jaden Jaden P- uh, 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 Jaden Smith had 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 died or something like that. That was a falsity, and, and it's a lot of other things that we know that 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 is not true that comes up on these various different mediums. But what I'm what I want you to get an understanding is is that again. Oh my God, yeah, that, that every time that you hear something about somebody, it's not necessarily true. And for me, I've always had this, this, this mindset. I want to know for myself. I'm like the Apostle Paul, I'm sorry, the Apostle Thomas in that regard. I have what is called, what I call the Apostle Thomas Syndrome. I absolutely need to know it for myself. I don't like to make conclusions about nobody based upon what somebody told me about that other person. I don't want to come to conclusions about that because... They, that is what's known as a subjective mindset. You've already then got in your mind made up about that person based upon what has been subjected to you about that person. On the other hand, what I say and what needs to happen and what I tried to do when I was working with the uh, Social Security Administration is to act objectively. What are you saying? That means that I ain't got no preconceived notions about you and, and who you are. I'm going to let you uh, in your actions uh, 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 and, and what emanates from you dictate to me how I deal with you and how I perceive you. Amen. And I trust, I'm going to tell you something else. And the reason why I'm willing to do that is because, oh my God, when I was walking around in the natural, when I was unsaved, I had a gift, y'all. I had a talent. And I still got it because it's just something that's intrinsic within me, something that God has entrenched within me. I had the ability that my people from down home said that I could read people. Well, I got discernment. I got great, I got a great gift of discernment from the Holy Ghost. And I tell you this, I'm not one that you can easily fool. I am very observant. Not that I'm sitting there watching everything that you do, but it, it, it amazes me as to how things can be retained in my mind just from a casual observation. It will come back. Why? Because the Holy Ghost will bring it back to my remembrance. And then God allows me to see by way of the Holy Spirit uh, 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 what is and what isn't. So, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Oh my God. Right. But rejoicing when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. It's ready to believe the best of every person. That's where we were. Its hopes are faithless under all circumstances and to do is everything without weakening. That's one thing that I'm assured of. I know this for myself. I'm giving my own personal testimony because I can speak for Arthur. I have gone through and endured some things in life, not maybe greater than some people, but it's been my experience. Amen. And so therefore I can speak to that. Now, I know that in, in some instances, some of the things that I've endured that I have seen people going through something similar, they ain't make it. It overwhelmed them. It consumed them. It wore them out. It took their minds, y'all. Only by the grace of God that I am, if I am fully, that I'm in full, oh my God, that I'm operating out of the, out of the full capacity of my mind. Because God knows that without Him, if it wasn't for Him, oh my God, my mind would be gone. I mean, literally gone. I would either be in an, been in an insane asylum or be on medication or something other. But that's the power of God, and you can, and that's why I'm, I'm, I'm very clear about it. That's why I can't do anything without God. Without God's love, I cannot do anything. I would not even be in my right mind if it was not for the love of God within me. Lord, help us, Holy Ghost, for our knowledge. Is verse 9 is fragmentary, incomplete and imperfect. And our prophecy, our teaching is fragmentary, incomplete and imperfect. That's right. But when the complete and the perfect total comes, the incomplete and imperfect will vanish away, become antiquated, void, and superseded. What are we talking about? Well, there's going to come a time. 
I may not know what I am, what, what I will become, but there one day I do, one thing I do know, one day I'm going to be just like Jesus. Uh-huh. I'm going to.